Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, distinguished panelists, I am honored to welcome you all to this side event, a continuing challenge for human rights in Sri Lanka. Thank you all so much for your presence. I'm Sabah Shahzad, the Vice President of EIE PSR, and I'm pleased to be the moderator of this side event today. Now, moving towards the session, we have three accomplished and very intelligent speakers today with us, Mr. Bob Blackman, MP of Harrow East Chair of APPG Cosmos, Mr. Afzal Khan, MP of Manchester Gordon Weiss, Chair of APVG, and Dr. Feroz Mubarak, Clinical Director for Primary Care, SAS. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Now, I will move to the first speaker of this session, Mr. Bob Blackman. You have the floor. Uh, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Uh, and for those of you uh, that I haven't had the opportunity of meeting previously. Uh, I'm Bob Blackman, me Member of Parliament for Harrow East, uh, Chairman of the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Cosmos um, uh, since its foundation. And I'm I'm grateful to Afsal or here is one of the Vice Chairmen who, who's also speaking on behalf of the whole organisation. I also have a very significant uh, Sri Lankan mosque in my constituency that I'm very pleased to cooperate with uh, on, on, a, on an ongoing basis. I think the, the remarks that I make will be uh, threefold. First, of course, being we, Sri Lanka has been through a terrible and bloody civil war. And ever since the end of that war, uh, and actually during the war, religious minorities have been targeted by the government uh, of Sri Lanka in an unfair and discriminatory way. I think it's fair to say that the uh, Muslim population, Muslim minority, have, have suffered discrimination and uh, human rights violations for a considerable period of time. Indeed, representatives of, of uh, Muslims in uh, Sri Lanka have indeed stood up um, in public um, and of course have been suffered considerably as a result and almost, and almost been forced to resign uh, as a result of the, um, the outrage that they've had to suffer. And equally, I think there has been um, a, a, a form of castigating Muslims in Sri Lanka, which is completely unacceptable by the majority population. We move on then to the, the current issue, which is that of forced cremation. And I think my, our speakers will be speaking about that. This doesn't just affect the Muslim population because obviously it affects other religions as well who believe in burying their dead. And I, I take the very strong view that it's the absolute right of uh, the people following a religion to um, deal with death in the appropriate way. Now, um, that has meant in Sri Lanka the attempts to force everyone to cremate their dead. Um, and indeed, the excuse for that has been that in somehow, shape or form, um, the COVID people that die of COVID, um, the, the infection continues and could somehow leach out of the coffins and therefore force its way into the water stream and could convey itself with a greater infection. I won't comment on that um, because I'll leave that to, to, to Ferros, who I think could, could actually uh, demonstrate the falsity of that particular proposition. Um, it is quite clear that, that the damage that's being done is that people who are of the Muslim faith in Sri Lanka are uh, unlikely to declare the fact that they are uh, suffering um, for fear of what that may be. Um, it's also meant that cremation is taking place against the will of the people and indeed forcing people to suffer unfairly. And that's been happening um, since the 11th of April last year uh, when the Ministry of Health introduced the, the change. Now, interesting enough, uh, the Sri Lankan government um, have changed, as I understand it, in recent days, the requirement of forced cremation. I don't see what's changed. And um, the reality is that unfortunately, COVID infections are still with us. People are still dying of COVID. Um, and the reality is that at the moment, my understanding is that no uh, Muslim deaths have been enabled to, uh, to bury the dead as would normally uh, be the case. But obviously it does affect people uh, of various different faiths as well. Um, this has obviously resulted in court action uh, within uh, Sri Lanka. And indeed, it is quite clear that, that the position is, the government's, the government of Sri Lanka's position is untenable. 
I can tell you, colleagues, um, that I joined with others to lobby the UK ambassador to the UN Human Rights Commission um, last week on behalf of both the Tamil and Muslim populations of Sri Lanka to encourage the UK delegation to uh, promote the right uh, of, of uh, individual religions to uh, bury their dead as, as they would, uh, would wish, and also um, to combat the direct discrimination that's taking place, not only against Tamils, but also against Muslims as well. I think it's right that we join together uh, different minority groups who have been discriminated against in doing so. Clearly, the government of Sri Lanka will try um, to avoid having a resolution which uh, is uh, unfortunately detrimental to, to that government. Naturally, they will try and get away without any resolution at all. They may also promote uh, an alternative resolution to that being uh, proposed by the United Kingdom and others um, to, uh, to water down, literally, um, the uh, requirements and the calls for uh, justice and rec reconciliation uh, within Sri Lanka. I would ask all delegates of all uh, countries to resist that um, attempt um, and to actually consider supporting uh, the United Kingdom and others um, in uh, making sure that the human rights abuses are called out in the way they should be in, in Sri Lanka. I think it's very important that people of all different countries come together uh, and point out the damage that's being done to the not only to the Muslim population but other minorities as well in Sri Lanka so that we join together in an appropriate form to ensure that justice is done for all the people of Sri Lanka. I'll leave it there um, uh, for the moment because I know that my other colleagues will wish to add to my remarks.